Hello and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Pep and in this video we'll be learning the two to four player game Grifters. Designed by Jake Telepec and David Fulton and published by Indie Boards and Cards. The Grifters are powerful crime bosses recruiting new operatives into their organization. You'll be using these specialists to complete jobs as well as steal money from the government. But be careful, the other crime bosses may have their eye on your stash as well. Join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up, first lay out these job cards in the center of the table. Each color represents a different type of job. Place each color into a stack and order the cards from one to four, with the lowest number being on top. In a three player game, you'll return the purple jobs to the box. In a two player game, like we're setting up here, you'll remove both the purple and yellow jobs. These numbers on the bottom right corner also serve as reminders of this. These are ISK tokens. In a four player game, place 75 of them in the center of the table to form the coffers. Use only 65 with three players or 50 while playing with two. Give each person one of these player boards, known as a hideout, as well as three ISK tokens from the coffers. Also deal out one of each of these ringleader cards, as indicated here, to every player. Return unused ringleaders and hideouts to the box. Lastly, shuffle these specialists into a deck in the center of the table and deal three face down to each player. Combine these with your ringleaders to form your starting hand. And that's the setup. Grifters is played over a series of turns in which players will send their specialists out to complete jobs, perform capers, and fill their stash with stolen ISK. The player who most recently committed a legal infraction will take the first turn. Each turn is divided into three phases, starting with advancing time. Your player board is divided into four sections, three separate nights, and a refresh area to the side. During the advanced time phase, all specialists currently in your hideout move forward a night, following the arrows printed on your board. Any specialists in night three will be moved to your refresh area. This phase is skipped during each player's first turn, but here's an example of what this would look like. In the second phase, you will either perform a caper or complete a job. To perform a caper, select exactly one specialist from your hand and place them into night one of your hideout. Then, resolve the effect written on the bottom of the card. If you have any questions about specific specialist abilities when playing, the back of the rulebook includes an FAQ, which explains the complex ones in more detail. If you instead choose to complete a job, pick one of the topmost available job cards in the center of the table. Each has a specific skill requirement shown by these symbols. Each of your specialists will have a skill showing either Brain, Speed, or Brawn. To complete the chosen job, you must place a number of agents into your Night 1 matching the skills shown on that job card. This group of specialists is referred to as a team. You'll notice when placing the team, I offset the cards, so the specialist which I used can be seen here. This can be helpful as certain abilities can interact with cards in a team. That said, none of the abilities on the specialists used in a team are resolved when they are played as a group. Abilities are only resolved in capers, where specialists are played on their own. It's important to note that specialists do not gain their effects when participating in a job, only when completing a caper. Once your team is used, take the job card and earn a completion reward shown here. These may either draw you more specialists, gain you ISK, or some combination of the two. ISK is usually stolen from the coffers in the center of the table and added to your own personal supply, known as your stash. An effect may instead allow you to steal from an opponent's stash, but if the player you are stealing from does not have enough ISK, simply take as much as possible. Some effects allow you to draw specialists, which come from this deck. If the deck ever runs out, shuffle the discard pile into a new one. Keep in mind that there is no limit to the number of specialists a player may have in their hand at any time. If you have no card in hand to play on your turn, you must instead place one of your ISK into Night 1. This ISK will move along the Knights as specialists do, but when placed into the refresh area, it is instead returned to the coffers. During the final phase of your turn, take any cards from your refresh area and add them to your hand. It's important to note that the cards in your refresh area are not considered to be part of your hideout, so they are not affected by cards that target your hideout specifically. They are also not a part of your hand until your turn ends, so they cannot be used to complete jobs or capers on that turn. Gameplay then continues with the next player in clockwise order taking their turn, repeating this process until one of the three endgame conditions has been met. Either the last ISK has been taken from the coffers, all available jobs have been completed, or all specialists, including the ones in the discard pile, have been drawn, leaving none behind. 
At this point, the game ends immediately, and players count up their gained ISK. Having multiple jobs of the same color will grant bonus ISK shown at the bottom of the job cards. 2 ISK for 2 matching jobs, 4 ISK for 3 jobs, and 8 ISK for 4. The player with the highest total ISK is the winner. In the case of a tie, the tied player with the most completed jobs is the winner. If there is still a tie, the tied player with the fewest total specialists in their hand, refresh, and hideout combined is the winner. If still tied, players simply share the victory. And that's everything you need to know to play Grifters. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. But until the next episode, thanks for watching. <laughs>